You ready? Yeah, let's do this. Hey everybody, Brie Milani here with Sky Insurance Brokers on another episode of The Greatness Podcast and I have been trying to track down this woman for some time to get her on here so I'm really excited to have Benita Tadina and we are allowed to say it right, her son and business yes. partner JL Oliveris and they are with Cross Country Mortgage. Thanks for coming on you guys. Thank you very much, Brie, for having us here today. Yes, yeah, I'm thanks. really excited. I, it's not very often I get a team wanting to come on together, and I kind of thought it would be really interesting to have you both on here just because, obviously, I know mother-son, that's like one dynamic, but then you're now kind of training him into getting into the industry, so I thought it'd be great to have you both on. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, we'll start with you, how or when you got in the industry, a little bit of background, and then obviously we'll get going on to how you got in the industry, which I think I have a good idea. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. Um, I am uh, going on 22 years in the industry. So when I say industry, it's because in 2000, I started actually in real estate and uh, had a lot of friends that were in different aspects of the um of the industry, started there and I kind of found that that probably wasn't my niche. I just, um, I, I love working with people, I love explaining things, but real estate was just, didn't turn out to be my niche. And I was trying to do it part-time and real estate is really just not a part-time job. Right. You really have to give it your all if you're going to sell real estate. So I, um, talked to a few friends. I talked to a girlfriend that was in uh, title and escrow and uh, then talked to a couple friends that were actually in lending at the time. And my girlfriend with title and escrow, she goes, if I were you, I'd get into doing loans. And yeah. I said, okay, well, let me continue these talks with another friend of mine. And uh, he kind of put his hand out and pulled me up and that's how I started. And that wow. was back in 2001. Wow. Okay, so I did real estate for a short period of time and then got into lending because back then we only had to have our broker's license, or not a broker's license, but our real estate license to actually do loans. And um, that's where I started. And it was, um, from there, I was very intrigued about the numbers and actually helping people in buying their dream. Right. And it was it was just a great place to be and it was just a great fit for me so 20 almost 22 years now in the industry and i'm still loving it <laughs> i was gonna say either people grow to love it or grow to not love it <laughs> and they're like why am i still in this industry a lot of people i know say once you're in it's hard to get out but i feel similar to you is like i've been in it nine years and there's just something about it that you can't put your finger on it. It's just amazing. You help people achieve that dream of home ownership, which is obviously what we're all here to do. We all have one common goal, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And for most part, it's just not the dream of their first home ownership. It's their dream for their dream home right. eventually. Right, continue yes, to get there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And building their wealth through real estate is something that I really love to talk to people about and love to talk to my clients about. Yeah, which is yeah. something that's not talked about enough in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have your son here with us and you, what exactly is your title, your role here? So I am Benita's loan partner. There you go. I knew uh, it was partner, but I didn't know how it was worded. <laughs> yeah, so so we say loan partner at Cross Country Mortgage, but I kind of operate like an LOA. Um, I'm a little different than some loan partners. I'm, I'm actually already licensed. Some loan partners are getting licensed. Some might not have an intention of ever getting licensed, mm -hmm. but that's because, um, you know, uh, not just my mom, Benita's my mentor. So she's mm -hmm. kind of you know, we've kind of plotted out a path to where in the future she's going to kind of try to hand her business over me while yeah. I'm also simultaneously trying to build my own network and, and we kind of work in tandem. So we don't just have a mother son role, but like a student mentor role. And, That's and she's so awesome. a great mentor. So 
That's amazing. You don't see it very often where it like works out great with family. I mean, you do, you see the success stories, but it's pretty cool to see you guys work together. And like you said, more of like a mentor type of position. I think it's so important to have in this industry. I know I had somebody for the first couple years of my career that really helped me get to where I'm at now. And without her, I don't know that it would be where I'm at. So it's awesome to have that. And of course it's somebody you trust. (laughs) Now, what did you do before you got into this? So I'm like a jack of of trades. I was, I was coming out of my twenties and I did a lot of things and, uh, kind of just dabbled in some things, went deep in others. So mainly in my early twenties, I was doing music, which led me into marketing, you know, because I was helping produce things in, at, at the music label I was with. Oh wow! I, I learned how to use, um, Photoshop and kind of got into the marketing aspect of you, you can't just make good music. You have to market it, right? right? You have to put it out there. So that, that I started dabbling in things and, and kind of led me into marketing and I started doing marketing for, um, different companies and then started doing event marketing. And, um, and then I dabbled a little bit in personal training. Um, and, and, you know, actually what, when I got into this is, uh, during the pandemic had happened right. and, um, the job I was at at the time had shut down makes sense. for COVID protocols and stuff. It's actually doing, uh, factory manufacturers work at the time. Um, and still dabbling in marketing, even with that company. Um, but when, when the COVID stuff had shut stuff down, like, you know, a lot of people, kind of hung out and, and relaxed and, you know, got by on, on, um, unemployment. And, and I know there was a time to relax, but I, I'm not one of those people. I didn't want right. to relax. So like when I was driving home from my manufacturer's job and I called my mom, I, I don't remember if I was, cry- I might've been crying when I called you. I was, <laughs> it was a scary I, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, cause I just yeah. like started getting into a good workflow in my life yeah. and started to, you know, feel real comfortable in, um, just working consistently. Cause I, you know, I dabbled through my twenties. Yeah. Um, and Which I had is a good time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and now what was different about my late twenties going into my thirties now, now I'm 32, but I had kids now. Yeah. So I had two kids at the time that I had to take care of. So that put pressure on. Right. Um, so I was driving home from word of us being laid off for the time being. Ugh. And I called Benita and I said, Hey, what can, what can I do? Like, is I know business and she's made good money. I've seen my mom change her life around. Um, and, and she's always had a, a decent job at least. Um, but not one that I think she was as proud of as this one. Right. So, yeah. So I, I knew that she was proud of what she did. I knew she loved what she did. And, and the main thing is when, when you have access to somebody with success in this industry, that can give you a roadmap Mm -hmm. and you don't try to take it, then, then that's your fault. You know, and I wasn't going to let that skip by. Yeah. Not let that slip away, especially when you have somebody that's, you know, proved that proven their self. They know that they, what they're doing. She's done a great job. She has a great reputation, works with a lot of great top agents as well. Mm -hmm. I would do the same thing. If this were my parent, I'd be like, I will, whatever you do, I want to keep doing. I want to continue it. I think what you guys are doing is amazing. It's, you don't see it very often and it's pretty cool. And now you get to have, you know, have more time with your mom. It can't be a bad thing. Yes. 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 It's brought us very, very close together. Yeah. And that's amazing. And now you have how many kids now? (laughs) I remember you told me and I knew it was a number that I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have, I have five. Oh my gosh. We're, We're, the Brady Bunch, so I have two. Uh, my fiance has two. We have one together. Okay, that makes so, sense. So, so we're we're the Brady Bunch. Um, we are very much parents to each other's kids, yeah. as well as the one we share. Um, all of our kids, they range. We have them from high school all the way down to a little baby. Oh so we're in every every aspect of childhood oh right now. Gosh. So we got a high schooler, a middle schooler, elementary, a toddler. And, and a baby. Oh, wow. So we have all, all uh, bases covered when it comes to kids. <laughs> you sure do. I don't know how you do it because with the two I have, I'm like, yeah, my life's pretty full. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, though. You know what? My husband's always like, let's have more. I'm like, oh. We'll see. <laughs> Probably not anytime soon. <laughs> give, me, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let me like enjoy this for now. <laughs> so now let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, you with Cross Country Mortgage, you've been here for about how long now? Uh, I, I came on with Cross Country Mortgage uh, at the 
very, very end of September last year. Okay. And um, there was multiple reasons why we were up under um, a great leader, Jeremy Forcier. And um, it was just, uh, it, it, the timing was perfect. That was when uh, JL came to join me and he had just got his licensing. I remember that. Yeah, yeah he had just yeah. got his license. And so they had, a, they had a model set up for us for our partnership that just really worked right. well. I have to tell you that he's probably the best assistant that I've ever had, uh -huh. uh, which, awesome. and I'm not speaking that out of the fact that he's my son. I'm not being prejudiced in that, but um, he literally is. He keeps me on task, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, and you as can, loan right? officers. You can say it's your mom. You're like, mom, yeah. here's what you, you know, you can say it. It's, right? it's, it's a little easier. Yeah. Like when, when it's your mom and that, so you have a powerful person that, and when I say powerful, I mean, Strong. Confident. Strong, yeah, confident. confident. Yeah, very, very way. strong, very confident. Powerful is a bad word. Confident. I don't think powerful. I think that's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> that, that good. She's confident. Right. And so if you're trying to work uh, uh, alongside her and you're trying to get her to move and you already see her going 100 miles an hour, you might go, hmm, I don't want to push 110. Right. I'm her son and I'll, I'll go, you need to go 120, oh, you wow. know, and don't worry, I'm in the car with you. <laughs> so, right next to you. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, I, I have... Um, uh, an angle that I, I can approach uh, it from that that allows me to be a little more comfortable to go. Hey, did you do this? Or right. Did you not do this? Which is so beneficial <laughs> for your clients as well. It's more obviously. like, hey, mom, don't forget, you got to call so and so yeah. at this time. You have this I tomorrow. Wish I had you that. have that. You know, and I so wish I had that. At <laughs> this time in 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 my career, this is very helpful for me because I'm sure a lot of people are going to laugh. Most of us LOs are kind of like a little ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think and, that's what makes And we're kind of always good. sending those si shiny objects. It's like, oh, squirrel. Yeah. And so um, he really keeps me on task. And I can say that I'm at a point in my business right now that is extremely peaceful Ugh. and wonderful. And um, Not a lot of people and, can say that. Yeah. And the leads are coming in. And I have time to... to to actually spend quality time with a lot of those leads that are coming in and explain because my passion in this industry is to really hold someone's hand and, and explain to them, you know, what they can do. I never say no to somebody. I'll tell them, well, if you do all of this, we can say when. And I've put um, many, many people anywhere from, you know, three months Sometimes it could be only one month, but anywhere from three months to two years into a home. And to see them achieve that is, um, is beautiful. Especially yeah, if maybe yeah. they were told no by somebody else. Yes. And then you're like, Often. wait, 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 yeah, we yeah. don't say no around yes, here. Here's yeah. what we can do to get yeah, you let's, there. Let's, yeah, let's make a plan. Yeah. So that's, that's where my passion is, is really making a plan for, for the you know, first time home buyer that doesn't understand. We speak a different, we speak a different language. Yeah. You have to you put know? it in layman's terms. Yes. Terms. Here's what you yes. will understand, mm -hmm. how you can understand mm -hmm. it. Yes. So I know when we were talking, you guys were saying with coming over to cross country, you have like access to a lot of different products that you haven't had access to, to before. If you guys want to speak a little bit on like some of the products that you see, uh, or maybe like first time home buyers, I know you said a little bit, or do you guys have any specialties or niches that you tend to do? Yes, we do. We have, um, one of our specialties is, um, we used to call them uh, no income, no asset documents pretty much. And uh, it's not quite that easy. It is a niche product, okay? So it is a non-QM loan and it is called um, a DSCR. And it is designed for those that want to go out and purchase an investment property but they don't have the ability or it's too much for them to uh, pull all of their income documents together. And this product is based on um, a lease agreement that will cover 100% of the oh. principal interest taxes and insurance and HOAs, if mm. applicable, on that home. And this is, this is for an investor. Okay, mm -hmm. this is an investor product. And it works really well. Very simple to do. So what if you were like a first-time investor? Anybody who is in getting a new house or no? You have to be a homeowner. Okay. okay so uh, you have to be a homeowner or you have to have two years uh, landlord experience. Okay. Either, huh. either or. So you have That's to already own cool. a home 
or two years landlord experience. That's pretty cool because, you know, my husband and I have talked about in the past, we, we, and we bought our first house. We had a good chunk of equity in it. So it's the only way we were able to buy our second house. And I've always said, I would love for there to be some way we can buy an investment property without having to pull equity from our house to have like a down payment or whatnot. But it's like, if you have that lease agreement, it's going to cover the mortgage. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Well, you do have to have a down payment because it is okay. investment property. So you have to have skin in the game mm-hmm. for us to write the loan. But it's, it's, it makes it so much easier, easier than- on on those that want to become investors. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty cool. And what I find cool about that product is because it, 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 it and it says there, real estate investors, big on, big on the sales sheet, uh, is that it helps us kind of break ice with some possible referral partners. Right. You know, because we can approach agents with something that may be applicable to their portfolio, not just their business. You yeah. know what I mean? So, which is always cool. Like, you know, you walk up to an agent and you go, hey, I, I, I can offer you this. I, I can close along quick. Yeah, I got, <laughs> Everyone we, says that. we all say the same thing. Right. But if we can add value to their actual portfolio and, and offer things and give them that background, then it helps us break the ice to maybe get into those other conversations or at least see how we fit together. That, yeah. That's why I really like that product. Whenever I'm trying to meet with new potential referral partners, new people, I like to bring that product because it's like, you know, a, like I said, a good icebreaker yeah. just to get the conversation started. It is true. And it's nice to have something that maybe not everybody else has because mm-hmm. that is the hardest part in this industry. I always like, actually what I've learned and over the past few years of being now at sky, they're like to not talking to, you don't always talk about speed or price because everyone can talk about speed yes. and price. Mm-hmm. And how do you prove that until you get actually get a fir- the first deal, right? Mm-hmm. So like, what can you bring to the table? That's different than what everybody else says. So that's great. You guys yes. have some products. And now I know you do work with, um, first time home buyers as well. I know like in yes. the past we've talked about that. Yes. And yes. what other niche products do you guys? Um, well, the other niche using? product that we have, which, um, so remember it's 21 years. So I, I, I rode that wave through that bubble burst. Right. And, in 2000, and you stayed in it, right? Seven and eight. Oh. Yes. Oh, so yes. I stayed in it. I'm we, actually, we I, I, I remember when we all had to actually go out and get uh, licensed our NMLS licensing. When was that? And How long that in your career in, were you? I want to say, was that in 2009? Uh, so think? about when things were kind I think of 2009, I think is when, um, so they, so Dodd-Frank came about and then we all had to get licensed and there was a bunch of other things. So back in the day, we had um, a product and they called it a bridge loan. And the product on the bridge loan was pretty cool because you could list your home, okay, that, that you were selling. And you can have, like, we would set up the bridge loan, the, the equity line of credit to bridge the gap for the down payment to the new home, mm. okay, and not include the bridge loan payment or the current house payment that you have on the market in your debt to income ratios. Hmm. Okay. But with Dodd Frank, uh, things changed. Risky, and so maybe. you had to, with Dodd Frank on a, on a qualified mortgage, you have to prove the ability to repay the mortgage. Mm-hmm. The client has to prove the ability to repay the, cl- the mortgage. So, um, the bridge loans kind of went away. I mean, they still said, oh, we have a bridge loan, but you had to count all of those payments in the debt to income ratios. And here at Cross Country, we actually have um, the first mortgage product, which is also the niche product. So you can use your current home equity line of credit. You can, we can, we can set a home equity line of credit up for you uh, to bridge for the down payment on the new home if you don't have it. And then we don't include those two payments hmm. uh, towards your debt to income ratio on the new housing payment. So it works really, really well. This is truly what we used to do back then. And it is a, it is a niche product. And so. now is that like for the case of like, if I wanted to sell my home today, but, or I found a house that I liked, I wanted to sell my home, but maybe like, you know, the timing type of thing. So it kind of allows you to be able to do Make both a at once. contingent wow. offer. Which those that contingent is, that offers is, yes. is what kills them. Yes. Is, and that's exactly right. When you have a home to sell, that's what's taking them out of that those offers uh, that are yeah. being made is because the seller doesn't want to wait for them to, to sell their home. Yeah. 
And so this huh. allows, this product allows them to do a non-contingent offer. Wow. That's yes. amazing. That mm. might be the first I've heard that. So you heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> that's you heard pretty, it here first. It okay. is cool because I do hear people <laughs> say that. It's like, well, I don't want to sell my house. And then wait for a house, the right house to come on the market and then rent for, you know, you know how expensive rent is these days, rent for all these times. And then I finally can. So a lot of people hold back from selling, even though let's be honest right now, things are flying off the market. So it's like, okay, you could do that, but then you have to find that perfect house and it's not all, it doesn't always work out that way. So that's pretty amazing. I'm glad you shared it. Cause yes. now I'm like learning about these two products. <laughs> we honestly don't normally, well, not normally I've had people, but talk about different products. Cause a lot of people I find don't have always have mm -hmm. niche products. So that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, while we're talking about the market, let's talk about the market <laughs> what's going on now. I know it feels like every time I do this, it changes a little bit. So like the trend was last year. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I can't even breathe. And then like for a month, it was like, it kind of slowed down. And then now I'm like, is it picking back up? So I want to get your guys' take on it. Obviously, you're the experts, not me. So I'm just an outsider looking in. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always going to be a crazy market in this industry. Whether we're dealing with um, loans just coming at us left and right and out of the woodwork. That was the craziness okay. people were uh, dealing with. Or uh, you're in a crazy market where you're trying to you know, balance the interest rate and your clients and trying to explain to them uh, the intricacies of what the interest rate is and what it's driven off of. Right. And that one in itself, and of course, from lender to lender, they're, you're, they're gonna be different. Um, here in, the, in, this, in our local market, uh, we're definitely right there in, in, the, in the mix and very competitive where that's concerned. And so, um, even though it's crazy, I and most people are saying, "Oh, the refis are going away." I currently have four, five, I have five refis going right oh, now wow. because people are going to still refinance for different reasons. Right. Yes. Okay, so the, everybody that I'm refinancing right now, uh, I have refinanced in the in the past, actually 2020, and um, the, now they're looking at, "Hey, you know, even though the money's a little, the the interest rate's going to be a little bit more expensive." Real estate is probably the safest place for your money right now during an inflation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many people understand that or know that. And even, especially with our market, because we're still increasing in value. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough inventory for the amount of buyers that we have. So yeah. it's very safe to put your money back into your real estate. So I've still got those going and the purchase business is, yes, we are, we are there. We're competing neck and neck with, with, uh, all those multiple offers and, and still getting accepted offers. So I'm very thankful and very grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. So what I, I guess what I would add and, and Benita puts it very well, um, it, it, so this market is, is unusual. So like, like Benita just said, the prices are still going up, uh, but rates are going up. And so right now we're having to task the issue of letting our clients know that, hey, this isn't the end of your equity building, um, but this is the end of, of you know the government keeping that rate low. And we're right. starting to see it climb a little bit and, and, and nobody... You never know, right? right. What, Could what's go down happen. tomorrow. You yeah. just never know. Yeah, you, you don't know. But but there are market trends, and we try to pay attention to those. So we're, we're in this market right now, and it's starting to become less competitive, you know, than it was last summer. And 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 we're trying to keep that business rocking and rolling. So we're calling people that. Oh, it's it's a little too competitive last summer, but, but maybe now is the time. You're like, right? no, so, imagine yeah. if you could have done it last summer. <laughs> right. Oh, there are many of those too. Yes. 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 So, and that's what it is. Just the people who didn't want to compete. Right. Are, now they're going to have to deal with the rate. But um, but that and that's where just service comes in. You have to uh, assure people, make sure they feel comfortable during, you know everything they're gonna go through in the home buying process, because mm -hmm. it, it is the, I always say it, the biggest purchase someone's gonna make in their life, right? right. Buying the house they're gonna live in, build their equity. So yeah, we're, we have to kind of adjust right now. It's mm -hmm. not the normal rates go up and prices come down that right. we're used to seeing. I was actually in a meeting earlier uh, with some agents that I work with and actually another lender from another company who we all kind of shared notes and stuff. 
Um, and he was saying, he's like, man, this is a weird market. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the rates are going up, but the prices are staying up. Mm -hmm. And how are people going to look at that and want to buy? But, but, you know, true professionals will, will make their clients, you know, feel comfortable and, and make them feel safe, hopefully, in uh, investing in equity. Yeah, and I think one thing that I, I hear on repeat of, you know, we've been so used to rates being in the twos and people saying, okay, even if they go to, let's just say the fives, it's still so low, right? It's like definitely. compared. Yeah, definitely. Even when I got in the industry, they were in the fives, mm -hmm. like almost 10 years ago. And I remember, I'll never forget, I won't say his name, but I know I've mentioned it here on the podcast. He stood up at PCAR and he, it was, rates were like four and a half percent. This was probably what, two years ago? Does that sound right? Before COVID? Maybe it was I three years ago. It might have been. I'm trying to remember. It's it was so hard probably to like mid them, to yeah. low fours. Mm -hmm, and he's mm -hmm. like, you need to get your clients in escrow because rates will never be lower. <laughs> and they just <laughs> who, who kept going down and down and down. I was one of those loan officers that kept saying, there's no way that the rates can get lower when we, got into the, when we got into the low threes. And I yeah. said, they just, there's, this is impossible. They can't right. just keep going. Low. And they just kept going kept lower. Going. Finally, I said, I started telling my clients, well, you know, I'm not going to say that the rates are not going to get lower <laughs> yeah, because I don't have a crystal it keeps ball. proving me wrong. <laughs> right. And so I stopped saying that. And, um, but I can tell you that no, even if the rates after the bubble burst in, in the 2008 time period, interest rates were like between five and six yeah. percent. Probably about okay, three so years later I got you're, in. You're so. talking, I think you're talking maybe seven, eight, 2007, 2008, 2009, uh, if, I, if my memory is correct. And um, when I bought my first home, okay, in 1996, my interest rate was 10%. Wow. And so we didn't even blink an eye, right? You didn't, my mom said right. the same thing. She's I mean, like, it and, didn't even. And, and the, the price was right. much lower, but still it was 10%. Yeah. So, so we'll see, we'll see how, what this market brings. I but, know. but like I said, uh, back in 2008, I would tell my agents because there was a lot of people that went back and got a real job. Okay. Got out of uh, this. Yeah. They're like, Oh, now I need, I, now I need to go get a real job because the deals stopped falling in their laps. Yeah. And, um, so basically it's, it was, you know, I told my, my agents at that time I was in house with, with, uh, in house lender with Cobalt Banker. And, um, I told my agent, I said, look, there's this many people. Okay. Agents in the industry. Okay. And there were this many people looking for a home in the market. Right. Okay. Now there are only this many people mm -hmm. in the industry, you know, the ones that stuck it out, the ones that the had to get the professionals, the, you know, the, so, and then now there's still this many people in the industry. So there's more clients mm -hmm. for these agents. Yeah. yeah. So Which thing. I've heard is kind of similar to now. It's yes. like when mm -hmm. rates have gone up a little bit, but I have seen a few lenders post, you know, the real true people are going to stick through, even though we don't have a, like the 30 refinances we've been having, the real people are going to stick through and it might not be a good thing. It might mm -hmm. be a good to kind of shake out the people who aren't you know, truly in it, but mm -hmm. we're going to head to a quick break and then we get back. We'll talk a little bit more about you guys, the team and everything like that, but we're going to uh, do a break really quick and we'll be back. Sounds good. All right. We are back and we were just talking a little bit while we were on break about we're like, so what are some things that we wanted to chat about before we wrap up the show? And one thing that I love to ask, especially loan officers who have been in it for a while, like 20 plus years. That's, you don't hear that very often. Most people like got out of it at some point, but you're like, nope, I stuck through. What's something like, and it's perfect that you have now somebody that you are mentoring here to kind of listen to, but what's something that if you knew 20 years ago that you know now would have like either changed it or you wish you would have known or listened to? That's a tough one. That's a um, there could be multiple. In hindsight, what would you do differently? Uh, and I've always had an attitude that I'm glad I didn't have a choice to do things differently. And the reason no, why I say that I like is that. because I love where I'm at right now. I really love where I'm at. I love the peace that I have in my heart. I love that I've been able to 
um, touch and change so many lives along the way. And you're not going to make 100% of the people happy. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, yep. you've Amen had, to that. you know, I have had my share of um, incidents where uh, couldn't make, you couldn't make a client happy no matter what you did. Right. And it's okay. But as far as what I would do differently, probably not a thing. I like that. Uh, I, <laughs> not I, what I was expecting. My, my dreams and my prayers have came come true. Aww. I mean, they're coming to fruition now. My son has joined me in my business. Uh, my daughter does very, very well. I'm on um, 11 grandchildren ranging Ooh. from 23 to three months. Oh. And a uh, wonderful husband. And uh, I'm looking forward to this next five years where Jail and I are going to be transitioning uh, our, our team together and I will slowly kind of step back and I've always been very visible in the industry as far as women's council and, yep. uh, you know YPN whether it's sponsoring or doing whatever I've done in this industry as, as far as marketing and branding the company that I'm working for for me to step back and let JL kind of take that realm of it while he's building his business and of course always be there for my my agents right. I will always be there for my agents and I I love working with my agents and being able to just give them that quality time that they deserve and give their clients that quality time so probably wouldn't change a thing I love that that's a first nobody has ever said that before that's awesome and now we were talking a little bit while we were on break about what you had just said, you know, integrating you into this awesome industry, crazy oh, industry. If you're going to ask me what I'd do 20 years ago, I'd say not sell all my Pokemon cards. Me too. <laughs> no, I just sold mine on eBay. Right. Literally, it's my like, husband was like, let's look it up. 250 bucks. I was like, yeah. thank you. I wish I would. That's my 20 years ago. I wish I would have my Pokemon. We're almost, this, I'm almost 30, <laughs> so we're the same age. <laughs> But so what's some goals? Like I know we, you want to, you're doing marketing, you're doing the events, you're doing kind of behind the scenes, but it sounds like your goal is to eventually be a loan, like a full-time loan officer, have oh, yeah. all your own clients and, and of oh, course yeah. help her clients and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, the goals, the goals are, um, well, as far as my own success, yes. Then I want to become a loan officer. I, I, Maybe I even have a team one day. Yeah. S since I've got into it, um, I've had a lot of friends kind of see that I could do it, and oh. it's kind of motivated them. You're like, go so, get your license. Yeah, <laughs> so that's cool. Maybe maybe branch management one day. Who knows? But, uh, um, it, yeah. But like, <laughs> your mom's no, like, no, no, don't do it. I, I met yeah. you when you were a branch manager, I, I remember. <laughs> if, if, I have, if I have the, the uh, self-sufficient, it's just a lot of stress, you know, yeah. let's just put it out yes. there. Yes. You have a lot of yeah. people who are self-employed. You're trying to tell a self-employed person what to do. I mean, I don't know about that, but yeah. you could probably do very well. <laughs> it, 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 maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Building well, a team is different, though, than actually Yeah, if a you brought manager, people. Manager, yeah. 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 And Definitely like, yes. a team, maybe. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you could, like, build it to where you have people that, you know, you know. Well, don't forget, I'm part of that team still. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom's well, still there. Grow our team. Our team. Right, we we're going to grow our team. Our team is great. We have three people. And Missy's not here with us. So we, she's our other loan partner that helps us. Um, but we have a great team right now. But to grow that team. Yeah, that's but great. as far as, like, the goals that I, I really, 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 like, want to achieve in this industry, um, I want to. I just want to help families get in homes. Yep, that's so, what it's like, all about, right? When Benita talks about some of these clients that, you know, she's been counseling for a year or two years, and, and then I see it come full circle and you get somebody pre-approved and you get them in the contract and, and, and you, you know, squeak by all the, all the rigmarole that, that comes right. with it and, and get that person qualified and into a home. Um, I don't care about dollar amounts. I guess I'm, I care about units. Mm -hmm. The more families we help, the more families serve, the better. And, um, That's amazing, yeah. And I th we, we're very faith-based. And, and our faith is that if we help people, then it'll come back to us. Always, you know? and, yeah. And we've always been able uh, to receive that blessing 
So I think as long as we keep our hearts in the right places and truly try to help people, we'll be good. So that, that's my goal. I just want to help. I want to put I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to end this. Yeah. Like you both just like, well, you, I didn't think you were going to say that. So that is amazing. And what a cool thing. I actually, I do spin in the morning and one of the gals that I love, she's an instructor and she always talks about that. Like, don't try to rewrite your past, you know, just like accept it for what it is. Don't try to be any different. But if there's something you didn't like about it, you just do better, right? Yes, do better. You move on. You move on, and, right? You move on. And, yeah. and moving forward, you can do things different. Yeah. Um, but I never learn go from back it. in hindsight because I just, yeah. You're in a good well, spot. Yeah. If, you're, if you're happy where you're at, then you don't want to change where you've come from. Yeah. Right? And so that's yeah, because it could change where, where you're, you're at. at. Your trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. We appreciate it. You were both amazing. I'm glad to have you both on. And yeah. Yes, thank you for everybody who's listening. We appreciate it, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bree.